Okay. So, like I said, in normal situation, when you have your uh, system properties, you don't you don't normally put it in your giving and navigate to the site. Normally, you put it in the before um, class because you can have it before binding class, so so that you put everything that particular class you run or the method you run before any method in your uh, scenario should, should run. So it might be like a before scenario, but there's no concept of before scenario in Kikumba as we have in Specflow. So because of that, so what you need to do is to just put it in, in before. So now what I'm going to do, if I go to the hook, I'll create I need to now create a method and I call it before. So and method, let me call it setup public void setup. So now I think I need to bind that out enter. So I want to use the Kikimba one, so not the other one. So okay. So what happened is that this my before um, method is going to run for before any of my scenario is run. So that will mean that it's going to run for each of the scenario for before that's done. So why do you need that before? Is when you want to connect to the database, you want to initialize your web driver, you want to do something that has to be done before you start your um, application start. And some people can say, okay, I want to log in because every time I need to log in, I need to put that there. So some people will do that even at this step. But in our own case, what we want to do is that we want to open a fresh browser in our before, then we can continue from there. So we might say, okay, yeah, let's initialize only, so don't open the browser. So that we can do. So I can go to the login page now that we've already set that, yeah. So I can remove this too and put it in my before. So, so that would mean in my book, so I can okay. So that means in my book I've got these two. So set my properties and also go to Firefox. That's what it does. So if I run it again, So if you do the same thing, because I think nothing has changed, it's only I just move things across. So why that is doing this is big, so the next bit that we're going to do also is the after scenario. So, so I'm trying to run it to see what if there's any issues. So, and also we go to the after scenario also. So we can also do that after. So I want to get that one. So, and that is public. I can just call it after scenario. I mean. So, what do you want to do after your scenario? I want to go to my book. 
so, so wrong. So okay. At this point right now I don't think you need you need to even put hook again because you just can't actually do like that. So it's close. Because you are now you, you are calling hook and also you are in this hook class already. So there's no point um, calling that. You can you can just remove that. So that's still fine because that is already there. So yeah. Uh, means before my test starts, I want to fire up Firefox, and also when my test has finished, I want to close that. So I think you can also pass a scenario inside. So that's another thing that you can do, but it's it's not compulsory that you do that. So, so scenario, I'm going to get the text one. So, okay, that is still running. It's taking time to run. Oh, I've got error message. I've got error message. And I don't think you need to worry about about this. Uh, for now, only worry about the one that says error. Okay, so as long as it's not it's giving that information or that warning, you can disregard that for now. So, after this, the next thing that we want to do is the page object. So this is taking time to run. So is the page object. So we just create a new package. We create a new package. We call it page object. New package. Page object. So I think that passed, so basically. So, so yeah, that's passed, as in, so we are not able to log in and I think he clicked on that, so. So, well, I think that was, the one I run was before this one. So if I run another one right now, that won't see anything in there. So I'll try to run another one and then we continue doing what we're doing as you can see it takes time for for it to run because this this system i'm using is slow i should move back to my system okay so i i think yeah that has started to run so well it will take time so now the next one is as i said the page object so before we go back to this page, I'll just explain briefly what we've done. So we just created a hook class, um, we created hook class before, and we initialized our driver, and we make it static one. So then we created a before, which means that this is our, start, our test starts. And what do we want to do? We want to in, uh, set our properties, and we want to fire up, we want to fire up we want to open Firefox and that's exactly what it's going to do so if you now go here on our login feature what that means is like before this giving is executed our before method will be executed first when that is executed then so it can now go to the given clause. So 
so after that, then he goes to this one. So I think that is already there. So that is test running. So just better to click on login. Okay, and fill in the email address and password. Okay. Okay. As you can see, so because you've you've put the after method that that should close the driver. So that basically what happens. So that's a question that comes in. Oh, um, normally I use it anyway, but let's see, someone is saying that do we need to use the gecko driver in some cases maybe no so if you if you do something like that would your test still run properly so maybe yeah so, so yeah let's try that for some yeah for some firefox uh, yeah um browser you need the gecko you need to use the with gecko and i know for some you don't need to you don't need to use that also so let's see on this machine if we need to. So I'm only running one test. So as you can see, this test no is no longer required again because uh, with this test now, I, uh, I've already put on my after scenario. For me, I can comment this line. So I, by putting as you commented R out, so that is no longer interpreted by the compiler. So that's what's going to happen. So I think that feels because it's going to be, yeah. So yeah, the part to the driver executive room must be set by gecko driver. So that is required. So we just need to set it. So yeah, as you can see, even if you didn't set it, it's going to tell you what you need to do then. You can, you can set it. That's fine. Let's go ahead. So, like I said, okay. Maybe before we go ahead, let's try to use Chrome. I think some people. Let's try to see if we can use Chrome. So. So it's the same thing. Instead of this, so we can let me just comment that out. So Chrome is the part of Chrome. 
Okay, so the same way also, you need to set the that path with the comb driver. So if we do that again also, and we say Another issue is okay. Let's continue. I think um, why this is trying to fix itself. So let's see another one, which is so we bring that in to that. When we play. So we need to download Chrome driver and put that inside. So that's what we need to do and that should be fine. So another driver that we could also use is uh, driver is equal to new internet explorer. So let's try that. Let's do. So this is
Okay. So let me comment that out. And let's try to use the Internet Explorer. So I think that also fills a lot less than one issue. Yeah. Same thing also needs to set up. So we need to download that. I think it's going to give this to where exactly that is. So if you open that one. So we stand with that. So this is nice. So we put in two point nine. How you driving?
complicado. Um, let's do that in the same location that we have the Better stay, sorry. I think it's better. Let's just rename that gecko driver to drivers. So delete this one. Rename this one to driver. Just to make it that easier for you to stop. That's that we don't come and say how what can come. Let's do the easy one. Fetch a new folder. Then I drag this inside it. Okay. So I've got my gecko driver inside it. So which means that I need to change this also to driver non gecko driver. Okay. So then I can as well I've copied that one. I can paste that one inside there. This is the thing that I'm changing. So I'll plug that one inside. Yeah, I think, yeah, Edge also has got his own driver. So I think Pat has done that before. So maybe next week, you know, it's good, yeah. So, okay. So now we just need to do the same thing that we've done here. So I'll put that uh, here. And this time around is going to be I D driver. Driver. 
So I tell people all this compile, make sure everything is fine. So once that finished, so then we try to run it again and see what happens. So, so then after that we go to page of it. Um, that's me, that's not a message. Yeah, we use Appium for mobile, yes? Uh, but, but it's not going to cover in this opportunity. We are trying to run that uh, now using Internet Explorer. So it's building now. All right, yeah, of course. You can select any internet explorer that you are using. So depending on you need to be careful which selenium is compatible with your internet explorer. So you need to take the right one for it. So yeah. So that fails. So that's what the error is. Okay, that feels actually so I need to check the version of Internet Explorer that I've got is compatible with the one I just downloaded. So I don't want to bore you with that one, so I'll check that one later. So let's move to uh, Firefox. I think that works. So for I have a that is a step to to use it, but I'll try to make that ready for next week so we can use other browsers that are available.
Okay, so let's try to run that just to be sure that if not, I can't have any issue from what you've done. Cool. So that's finished, and I think that should pass. So, yeah, we'll, we'll look into other browser next week, but I think those are the steps anyway, if you want to do that. So, okay, let's go quickly to, let's try to use page object now. I'll close. So now, page object. So what you need to do is create another class. So new Java class. So let's say we change for login. Page object is really, really, really very cool, very cool. So I've got some people that say I've started a, a job and I look at the code, I can't see find element because maybe the person is in the page object. So the find element is wrapped together in the page object. So you don't need to say find element. What you can be saying is like find by then you specify how you need to find that object. So let's say this is our class now, it's a login class. And we want to find our object or our element. For instance, if we go to the login step, the one that we did before, there's different elements that we have we actually found. For instance, this one. We found this one by expert, and we use this expert. So, for well, in page object, this is what we're going to do. We're going to find that object or uh, element the same way also. Well, we're going to say find by find by. So I'm going to say find by, then you open bracket. Oh, sorry. You open bracket, and how do you want to find it? How, then dot. So let me just add this first. Dot semicolon. I'll just continue anyway. By our S part. I'm oh, sorry, it's not that. Sorry, I got that one. By yeah, equal, equal, equal to 
That's the S part that we used. So using Using the sequence to the then so what's the element by yes then the work element. not add the audio required libraries to, to that. So you press or to enter. That uh, is the first one or to enter again. So that's one thing that's missing that's another about our listening is we need to put out the binding. Yeah, so, so yeah, imagine that's what you can not see that. So yeah, uh find by then yeah, how do you want to find it? I want to find it by S path. So what am I finding? And that is the S path that we copy from yeah. For instance if you go to uh best practice. Yeah, we're going to get to Mr. Um, driver later. So, for well, yes, yeah. so this is the fine element. So we are not calling Mr. Driver right now. So, okay. So as long as we, I don't think I need to go to how to find that uh, for limited time. So you just go to find your element as in uh, the S path. You get find inspect elements and get their spot. So then you assign the name of that spot to it. That is one. So that is one step that you've done. So 
And the next step now is what you want to do on this particular element. So as you can see from here, we send keys into the element. So and you can now say public void. So let's say you want to send something into the element. What you want to send? Okay. Um, So enter email. That is the name of that particular method that you'll be calling outside. So and you're going to say email dot send keys. So what keys are you going to send? That is this. So, yeah, basically that's what you want to do. Then that is you using on page object. And now, if you now come here, instead of writing something like this, what you need to do is to call that login object. You call this login object and then you call the enter, um, yeah. Enter one, enter email address. So you, you say something like, okay, before you do that, okay, one, two, three, login. So. so if you say login dot, it's not, it's not there. So you need to initialize your login. You log that. You log me out. I'm logged out. I'm logging back in. <laughs> so I think I was logged out, so I'm logging back in right now. So. All right, so yeah, um, I don't know what happened to the connection, so hopefully we'll get the recording. So, yes. so uh, uh, yeah, right now, I said, uh, you know, when I started in the beginning, I told you that there will be concept of object-oriented programming that we have to we have to understand. So, for instance, the login class that we have, I want to call this login login class and we want to call this method from the login class. So and um, for this method is not this class is not a static class. You cannot call it directly. So because it's not a static class, you have to in, um, instantiate that class. So there are different ways to do that. You can do something like instantiate login. Mr. Login get and also small login is equal to my login class new get a new login. So then we need to add that one. Okay. So that is you now instantiating a small login, right? As an instance of that particular login that we've done. So anything that we created in that login which not can be referred to inside the new login. So I'm going to call the new login, which is lowercase login. If I say dot, then I can see other things that are inside that that I can actually call. You can see enter email. So now I can call on that, and that's it. So that's 
So that does so you don't need Mr. Driver again. So basically that's how to 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 drive your car using the new Tesla uh, driverless. So which is you don't need to miss a driver. This is what this is gonna do for you now. It's going to go to the login class and also then it's gonna to go to your method which is you you called uh, enter email. So what that is done is like okay, in enter email and it's going to look at emails, what is email and email is this one that you've declared is in your page object and you've declared it as find by how are you finding it? I'm finding this by SPAF and what is the SPAF that you are using? I'm using this SPAF to find this particular element and that's exactly what is, is done for you. So so basically you don't need this. But you could argue some people now will argue before I need to write it right and i also need to write this line and this line so which is going to be a lot of lines for me to write why do i need to use that instead of just write one line and that's me done but the problem is like if your username changes and you are using login in different places you are using that in, in different places you need to go into all these places and start changing them, changing them. But in this particular page object, you don't need to use scatter or put everything in your code. You already be, it's already been wrapped together in that particular method. So what you need to do is you go to your page object and then you can change what you want to change on your page object. So you don't need to go to your step definition to, to do that. So in different ways you type email addresses or in different ways you try to log in so that you use different email addresses. So you only go to your page object and you can start from your page object. So page object allows you to reuse your elements more often and also it also now makes your code to be as in neater, I would say. So let's do the second one, which is We've done the email address, let's do the password. So the same way also, you need to now write another one for the password. So app finds by, so now I know how to you know the syntax now. So how is equal to, how do I want to find it? Let's see how we found the last one, password. Let's see how we find the last part. I think we also use SPAP. So if you want to use SPAP, you can use SPAP also. So let's see. Oh, let's, you know, let's use it different. I'm not sure what there's something there. My network that is crashing. Yeah, okay. Doesn't matter anyway, so I think that's my network. So okay. So let's try to use the S part that we just before. So we go yeah and say dot S part. As you can see, we have other ways, so I, I, I think we went through that last time. So if you want to use class name, if you want to use CSS, you want to use ID, or I think it's even got ID or, or name, if you want to use the link text, if you want to use name, partial link text, and you can use tag, you can use export, depending on what you fashion. And also, not only what you fashion or what you are comfortable to use, also, it also depends on what that particular element has got in its properties because if that element has got an ID in its property, then you can use ID. 
But if you haven't gone and you cannot use IP, you have to use the different thing. So, okay. Let's go ahead. So, we're going to use SPART for this one also. So, what is the SPART that should be in the using clause? So, let's copy this SPART that we've done before. It's that there. So now private web element because it's, it's a web element that we are creating and what's going to be the name of that web element that we just created password. So uh, now the next thing that we need to do is to um, create another method that I'm going to call uh, public why what is the method called enter password okay so what am i going to do i'm going to call password so then send keys into it what keys am i sending that's my password which password did we use last time use password one so let's use that password one. Okay. So that is my page of the done for, for the password. So what's going to happen? I will not call this particular method wherever I want to use it. So if I go to the login step definition, so this is the previous one that we have with the find element with Luke. So I can comment that one out. So now I want to get the other one, which is login dot say I'll use the uh, enter email now enter password. So that is that. Okay. So so the same way also you can do for this also the click on login page. Let's see if the website is part to be honest. The same word. I'm not sure it's going to run because of the network issue. I have my Another thing is that when you try to clean the code, it also tries to, and also if you clean and compile, it tries to download the latest library for your code. And that's what maybe we do if you uh, reference other uh, JAS or Java code. So it's going to try to download the latest one, and then your code will be fine. So hopefully. Let's see uh, if the problem happens.
So this is not even required, so I don't know why uh, for others. So there's some error messages. Let's see what that is. Okay, I think this is one of the issues that people are facing. No pointer differences. So there's things that you need to do. You need to set up your uh, what's it called uh, page factory. Yeah, you need to set up your page factory so that to to work. So how do we fix that? I will show you quickly how to fix that. You need to open the login page. Okay. On the login page, you need to uh, you can select your page collection. So so There's something that is called in Java, it's called a constructor. So you need to create a constructor for your class. So I'll go through it again. Uh, the name of the class will be the constructor. That is login. So you need to say public login. Open and close bracket. So by that, if you create a method with the name of the class, that method is called a constructor because it's not normal method because this is another method, right? And it hasn't got the name of the class. But if you create a method, and that method is the name of the class, and the method has not got an, uh, what's it called? Assessor, as in what the return type or what's going to return, where, whether integer or void. So you only have public and the name of the um, name of the class. So that class is a constructor. So what do you do with the constructor now? You put your page factory inside. Page factory. So then you initialize the page perfect. So it's in initialize element. So yeah, and this is where you wrapped your Mr. Driver to read. Book 
Dawes brother. And then which um, page object are we referring to log in? Sorry, this is it's not you don't you don't put it in in the in the login class. You put it where you are using it, which is the definition. Sorry, because this is the way we are using it. This is where we are using it. So okay, I'll do that again. No matter. So you create a constructor. In, in the place that you are using your uh, page object. So it's going to be public. So the name of that particular class, as I said, is a, it's going to be a constructor. So then page battery. dot in element so and I say you bring your Mr. Driver in then So this is what you need to do. So that's what you need to do. This is what you need to do. So you bring you bring that in and that's it sorted. So so I've seen some people say, mm, uh, I don't know what that is. Maybe it's too difficult or something like that. So basically, so let's try to run it right now. As, as you can see, I, I'm just creating, creating it on the fly. So as, even with how many I have created, you can see I find I see get some issues and everything. So so that that also shows to you that even though you are working on it, issue you would you may encounter issues. Don't just lose hope and yeah, figure it out. Put in your team. Let your team help you to solve it. If they cannot solve it, I'm also there to to help you out. So that's very very important to point that out. So okay. Alright, cool. So you can see so we got our Firefox opened. Hopefully the um, network issue that we had is fixed. Okay, brilliant. Good. So to to recap what we've done, right? To recap what we've done, the first thing we started from is how to use before and after in in your code and what why do we need it? I think that there's a an article I actually found on the internet that helps you to, to know why you need to use before or after. Let me quickly bring that up. Firefox.
постепенно приступил на вот еще буду снять его. Login page objects in there. 
So um, then we started creating our page objects uh, based on the elements that we have. So like so we can find by how do you want to find it? We can use different methods, but we use as part in this scenario. So we know we can use different methods. Just click on dot and it brings all the methods that you can use to find that element. And also, since we're using, we're using SPAP, we also put the SPAP in the using clause. And we assign a name to the element that we're looking for. So, and then, because we know we want to enter uh, email address uh, of that user that we want to log in with, so we create another method, and we call the method enter name. And when you call the method enter name, you call your web element, and then you can send it to it. So that is what we did. So we got our web element, and we got our method also that calls that web element. The next one is to go into the place that we want to use it. So which is now, we now call the method from there. So we call the method from from there. Quickly, I will show you what some people have done. So just to make sure you, because some people also, uh, which I think it is a bit easier, but not the right approach, to be honest. So if you go to your login page object, so instead of declaring this as private, because we private, that means you are not able to see it in the other end. So, and that's why if you say login, for instance, if you say login here, you're not able to see email because it's private. So, but what some people, what some people have done before is, so to change this, like also you can see password, you cannot see. So to change this to, let's say, let's say email now, change this to public. So once you change that to public, you can now come here and say login dot, then you will see email appears. So once the email appears, you can send your keys from here. What you want to send, that is email dot com. So that is one method that people have used. So which now you don't, what that means is like, you don't need to create your method. You don't need to create this method that you are going to be calling in the step definition. You call your element directly from your step definition and then you do operation, your action on that element. But that is not the best approach. That's not the, because you don't want to expo expose your elements to any part. So you want it to be private. So well, that's one way some people have, have done it. So they make it public. And then, so they don't create another method there. So you go into, you go into your step definition, you call the login class and because you've now declared that particular element public, you can see it in, in your class. Then you can perform operations that you want to do on it. So but I, I, will, I will leave that out of the picture because that's not the right way to do it. So then I'll change this back to private. Okay. Yeah, so that is what we've done. Then after that, we also now we went to our step definition. We know that if we, we need to instantiate our page factory, otherwise we're going to get a null or uh, null pointer issues. So we created a page a, a constructor. Uh, I say a constructor is a method that's got the name the same as the name of the class. So you just started with visibility and also the name of the class. So, and 
then we put our page factory on there, page factory dot init element, and then we put our Mr. Driver inside, and also the page object that we just created, which is the login. However, because the login class that we've created is not a static class, so we need to instantiate it. So that's what we've done here. Also, we call that login. We get the instance of that particular login. And so that would mean that in this particular class now, we don't need to be calling Mr. on the big login. We only need to be calling that small login. And then it gets everything for us. That's what we've done at this point. Uh, we just call the small login and automatically what is in the class is, is shown. So I think that, that's it uh, for this evening. So any question? As my school master used to say, silence means you're happy. So, all right. So if there's no other questions, so we'll just call it tonight. So.